Hello students, today's video is for class 5 on the first topic, the circulatory system. The circulatory system consists of three parts, <coughs> the heart, the blood vessels and blood. Now let us take up each part and study. First we take the heart. The heart is a muscular organ which is located in the chest a little to the left. It is protected by the rib cage. It is the size of your fist and the heart is made up of four chambers. The upper two chambers are called the auricles. And the lower two chambers are called ventricles. This is the left side of the heart and this is the right side of the heart. So this is the left auricle. Below it is the left ventricle. This is the right auricle. Below it is the right ventricle. Next, we come to the blood vessels. There are three types of blood vessels. Blood vessels are the tubes that carry blood to the different parts of the body. Now, the three types of blood vessels are <coughs> arteries, veins and capillaries. The arteries carry pure blood from the heart to the different parts of the body. Arteries have thick walls. Veins carry deoxygenated blood that is impure blood from the different parts of the body back to the heart. And the capillaries are thin walled blood vessels that form the connections between the arteries and the veins. Once again, arteries carry pure blood from the lungs or from the heart to the different parts of the body. Impure uh, veins carry impure blood, deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body back to the heart. And the capillaries are very thin blood vessels that form the connections between the veins and the arteries. Next, we come to blood. Blood is made up of two parts. What is blood? Blood is the fluid that flows in the blood vessels. It is, made, it is red in color because of a pigment called hemoglobin. Now, blood is made of two parts. That is plasma. and blood cells. Plasma is the fluid part of the blood. It carries nutrients and waste products. Blood cells are of three types. They are the RBCs, WBCs and platelets. Now, RBCs are red blood cells. They are the carriers of oxygen. WBCs are the white blood cells. They are responsible to fight infection and germs in our body. The platelets are responsible for clotting of blood. Now, what is clotting of blood? When you have a wound, you see blood oozing out. Now, the platelets they come together and form a plug. This is what stops the blood from oozing. So platelets are responsible to prevent loss of blood. Now we come to the overall function of blood. What is the function of blood? Number one, blood transports oxygen from the lungs to the different parts of the body 
and carries carbon dioxide from the different parts of the body back to the lungs. Number two, blood carries nutrients to all the cells in the body. It supplies nutrients. Number three, blood transports the waste products to the excretory organs to be thrown out. Blood regulates the body temperature and last blood helps in clotting. So once again what are the three parts of the circulatory system? The heart, the blood vessels and blood. I told you the location of the heart in the chest on the left side protected by the rib cage. Blood is, uh, the heart is made up of, consists of four chambers, two auricles, two ventricles. Next, we did the blood vessels. They are three types, arteries, veins and capillaries. Arteries carry pure blood. They are thick walled. Veins carry impure blood. And capillaries form the connections between the arteries and the veins. Blood is made up of two parts, plasma and blood cells. Plasma carries uh, nutrients and waste products. Blood cells are of three types, RBCs, WBCs and platelets. RBCs carry oxygen, WBCs fight uh, infection, platelets help in clotting of blood. Next, we go to under, we need to understand the process of circulation of blood. Here I have a chart with the structure of the heart. You can see the two auricles and the lower chambers, the two ventricles. Now, during the circulation of blood, during the process of the circulation of blood, pure blood from the lungs enters the heart through the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein brings the pure blood, that is the oxygen rich blood from the lungs into the left auricle. From the left auricle, the pure blood gets into the left ventricle through the bicuspid valve. When this valve closes, this pure blood moves into the aorta. This is the main artery and from the aorta, the different arteries take the pure blood to the rest of the body. Now that's, the fun that's what the left side of the blood does. Now the veins, they carry the impure blood from the different parts of the body through two veins, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. These two veins bring the impure blood into the right auricle. The superior vena cava brings the impure blood from the upper part of the body. The inferior vena cava brings the deoxygenated blood from the lower part of the body. So when this impure blood gets into the right auricle, from here it moves into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, this deoxygenated blood or blood which is now rich in carbon dioxide moves to, the, moves to the pulmonary artery and from the pulmonary artery into the lungs for the exchange of gases. Now you will wonder, how is it that the pulmonary vein gets pure blood? Now always remember, the veins bring blood towards the heart and the artery takes blood away from the heart. Is that clear? Once again, pure blood from the lungs enters the left auricle through the pulmonary vein. From here, it moves into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle through the aorta, it goes to the different parts of the body through the arteries. Deoxygenated blood is brought by the veins. That is, it, uh, by the veins, it enters into the right auricle through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Inferior, superior vena cava brings the impure blood from the upper part of the body. Inferior vena cava brings the impure blood from the lower part of the body. And then 
it moves into the pulmonary artery to the lungs for exchange of gases. Now you have seen that the heart really does a lot of work. And as it is pumping, the heart makes a throbbing sound. And that throbbing sound is called the heartbeat, which can be heard with the help of a stethoscope. When the blood is flowing at high pressure through the arteries, there is a movement which is felt in the artery. And if you put your fingers on the inner side of your wrist, you will feel that movement. And that movement is called the pulse. Now, the heart really works very hard. We need to take good care of this organ. How can we take good care of the heart? We have to do some breathing exercises. We need to do some physical exercises like running, walking, swimming. Most important, we need to eat healthy food. We need to avoid junk food. Important again is good rest. We need to sleep well. We can also do a few exercises. Of, we can uh, also do yoga. This is how we need to take good care of our heart. So today's session ends here. Thank you.